the ocarina, an instrument with a long and rich history. Part of the vessel flute family, it dates back a mere 12,000 years or so. Originally made from clay and bone, stuff like that, ocarina-type instruments were widespread things, with historic examples being found in China, Japan, Egypt, India, and more. It seemed to arrive in Europe in the 1500s, but it wasn't until the mid-1800s that an Italian chap got his hands on it and made it into the instrument more recognisable by us today as the ocarina. He's also responsible for the name, ocarina being little goose in Italian. Today the ocarina is enjoying a new surge of popularity, thanks in no small part to Nintendo and Zelda. A fascinating instrument then, with a long, rich, varied cultural history. Mine is shaped like a strawberry. For pretty much as long as ocarina-type instruments have existed, they have been highly decorated and shaped into various forms, particularly birds and animals. There are certainly still plenty of novelty ocarinas available, but are these just style over substance, or can they hold their own as a usable, playable musical instrument? There's a whole ton of novelty-shaped ocarinas on Amazon, so I thought I'd give one a go. So, let's have a look at the informative leaflet. Ocarina is an ancient and fashionable instrument. Nowadays, ocarinas are no longer objects with holes. The tone of ocarina is very soothing. We'll see about that. The description said that the ocarina comes with a sheet of tunes, and indeed it does, but actually this is a generic leaflet meant for both four and six hole ocarinas. This is a four hole ocarina, and actually there's only one tune on here that looks like it can be played by the four hole ocarina. But there is a fingering chart, and it looks like we should have one octave of range Okay, I'm going to try to play the first tune. It's called Little Stars. The writing on this is really tiny. I'm going to have to squint at it. This is the traditional ocarina playing stance. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star catches up with every beginner wind instrument at some point. So what I do really like about this is that I haven't memorised the fingering pattern for the notes yet, I don't have to be able to read sheet music, everything is written out in sort of ocarina tablature, so you just follow the diagram, know where to put your fingers, and you can play a tune, even a basic one, straight away, which is nice. So maybe you're thinking, isn't one octave of range really limiting? Is there actually anything you can play on this ocarina? I think there's a surprising amount of tunes available for one octave of range when you really start to look.
as you can probably hear, the ocarina is really controlled by your breath, which seems like an obvious thing to say. But if you don't get the airflow right, then you're either going to be a bit sharp or a bit flat. Things that I'm noticing so far. I don't think the tone is too shrill or screechy. I was kind of expecting it to be. Ocarinas work by reverberating the air around in their bodies. So technically, the smaller the ocarina, the higher pitched and probably shriller it's going to be. This is only a small one, but I don't think it's unpleasant to listen to. There is a lot of air in the tone, but again, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just personal preference. The fingering system does seem to be pretty intuitive. I've only been playing this for a few minutes and with only an octave of range to learn, there isn't too much to pick up. So it means that you can get going with playing tunes pretty much straight away. It definitely does have the capacity to make all sorts of fun and weird noises. So this ocarina came with a diatonic fingering chart. That is, you can play an octave of range, but none of the sharp and flat notes, which is a bit of a problem if you want to play tunes with sharp or flat notes. But technically you should be able to play chromatically on this ocarina by using half holing or maybe just venting some of the holes a little bit. This ocarina is really small, so that means some of the holes are pretty tiny too. So I think using half holing is going to be tricky, but I'm gonna give it a go. I've just grabbed my iPad with my digital tuning app. Now, when I bought the Ocarina, there was a couple of different places selling the same one. One description said that it was in F major, another said that it was C major, and I've just tested it out against the tuner and it's much closer to being in G major. Maybe you just get what you get, maybe they're all slightly different. But anyway, it is a major scale, so let's go ahead and see if we can get any sharps and flats reliably. So sharps and flats are definitely in there somewhere and if you wanted to spend the time learning how to precisely locate your fingers each and every time to get them then yeah it's totally possible. That does somewhat broaden the range of the instrument. I'm going to try playing Skip to My Loo which has got B flats throughout. You play a B by covering just this tiny hole there, A is by covering the largest hole so I reckon if I play the B, lightly shade this one here, I might get a B flat. I don't think that was too bad. Not for an idiot that doesn't know how to play an ocarina and a novelty ocarina anyway. So I bought this somewhat sceptical as to whether it was an actual proper musical instrument. Is it just a bit of style over substance? Well, it certainly has performed better than I thought it would. Obviously, I've only been playing it for a few minutes, but I think it's something you could become quite proficient in playing. I don't know how well it's come across on the camera, I hope it's come across okay, but in reality it definitely isn't unpleasant to listen to, and yes it does definitely have the cute factor doesn't it, you could put this on a shelf and just be quite happy looking at it.
I think this little four hole ocarina is definitely worth the money. It seems to be pretty good quality. It's very cute. And if you just want a simple instrument that isn't too complicated to learn, then this could be the thing for you. Having said that, I think you could also definitely dedicate a lot of time into this instrument, learning how to reliably get those sharps and flats every time you want them, and then the world's your oyster. You could play plenty of songs on this little ocarina. There is also just something about it. I definitely feel the urge to expand my collection of novelty ocarinas. I think the little four hole pendant ocarinas are definitely an affordable way to get into ocarinas as well, and then maybe if you've decided it's for you, you can move on to six, eight, twelve hole ocarinas, whatever you fancy. As far as ease of playing goes, this one is pretty comfortable to hold. It's not an awkward shape, there's plenty of places to put your other fingers to support the instrument while you play. If you have large hands, it might be a little bit fiddly, but I suppose the holes aren't actually that close together. So even if you've got big fingers, it should still be manageable. The one thing that I have found slightly awkward about this instrument is getting the mouth position correct. It's really easy to cover the tiny opening with the wrong part of your lip or your mouth and then it just doesn't play. You do need to get a nice straight angle of air travelling through the ocarina so that it makes its best sound. But apart from that, it's pretty ergonomic and pretty intuitive to play. So there we are. I am officially a member of Club Ocarina. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I usually make videos about playing the recorder and the flute, though I am open to trying any other instrument. And if there is another instrument you would particularly like to see me try out, then let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again next time. Bye. And then you play an A by covering just this largest hole here. So I reckon if I play the B and lightly shade the A hole,